Welcome everyone to this team building experience called Leaders That Cultivate Rhythm, Crafting a Rule of Life to Stay Grounded. I wanna encourage you to download, make sure you have your downloaded handouts for this uh, seminar here that we're doing through video. And uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce the rule of life and then I'm gonna take you to an experience of actually crafting one for yourself, then we'll come out of that and process it uh, together. So let me begin with just uh, three quotes here to frame our time together. What you do matters, who you are matters more. What you do matters, but who you are matters more. Secondly, you cannot give what you do not possess. You can only give what you do possess. And then thirdly, the state you are in is the state you give to others. So the question is, how do we get there? How do we, how do we deepen who we are? How do we become a people who we actually possess something deep that we can give over to other people? How is it that we can get into a state that's worthy of actually giving over to other people? So uh, the desert fathers and mothers of the second, third, and fourth century actually were in a similar predicament that we are in today. And that is uh, the Roman Empire had become rapidly Christian over the years. There was so much idolatry inside the church as well as outside the church that men and women began to flee to the deserts of Syria and Palestine to seek God, get cleansed of the idols that were in the culture, in the church, and in their own hearts, so they could actually swim to safety and thus save the church and bring Christ to the world. They were fleeing the world to save the world, uh, and they understood the only way to save the world was to leave the world for the sake of Christ. So they, they saw themselves, as they went to the deserts, to they were following the traditions of Moses, who lived 40 years in the desert. They were following the tradition of John the Baptist, who lived in the desert. They were following the tradition of Elijah, who was in and out of the desert during his prophetic ministry. They saw themselves as following Jesus, who spent 40 days in the desert. And out of that came a deep walk with God, and these men were able to bring a tremendous word uh, from God in their day. So thousands and thousands of men and women fled to the deserts in Egypt and Palestine, uh, and it was actually a great revival that broke out in second, third, fourth, fifth centuries. Uh, they, they went there as solitaries, living primarily as hermits, but over time, they realized they need to gather in communities uh, and um. live together with a structure. And uh, they develop what's called a rule of life. And basically a rule of life is a structure or a rhythm for our lives that enable us, enables us to pay attention to God in everything we do. It's a structure, it's a rhythm, it's an anchor. So we can pay attention to God in everything we do. So we think of rule, we think of you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. That's not what this is about. Actually, it's an ancient Greek word. Uh, it comes from the Latin word trellis. Uh, it's a framework or structure to help us enable pay attention to God. To God. Sorry, I said that already. Um, basically, think of a, a trellis for grapes. For them to grow upward and outward, they need a trellis so they're not on the ground. In the same way, they developed structures for their life together as communities. with different communities in the desert how they would worship together perhaps once a week, how they do silence, how they would do community, how they would do the Lord's Supper, how they would do poverty, uh, to enable them to grow and blossom in Christ. Their goal in life was very simple, uh, Psalm 27, 4. It was to seek the face of Jesus. You know, Paul, David wrote, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon his beauty and to seek him in his temple. And that all of life is to seek the face of God. That's what we're about. That's our number one goal. And we will see him face to face one day. And so eventually these desert fathers and living in communities developed by a guy named Pacomius to start, uh, eventually morphed into what we know as monasticism uh, over the last 2000 years. And it was the rule of St. Benedict uh, in the sixth century who formalized it for the Western church into uh, some categories of a rhythm of work and rest and relationships and prayer. And, uh, uh, but as we think about it, this as an operating system, because really what I'm gonna invite you to do here today is to build in an operating system into your spiritual life so you can stay anchored in Jesus and not be swept away by the culture. Um, and uh, so this requires a theology of limits. Uh, limits of our time, our energy, uh, our money, uh, how we use our gifts. There's a, a famous story of Eddie Hellesum. Uh, she was a Dutch Jew who was sent to a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. 
And she was told she could only bring with her one small backpack and perhaps about you know one cubic foot of possessions uh, to sustain her. So she pondered and she planned, uh, mentally had to think it through. She had to pack and unpack that small bag. And she finally settled that she could only carry with her a Bible, a volume of favorite poems by Rilke, German poet, a bottle of aspirin, an extra sweater, and a chocolate bar. Like that was it. And uh, so uh, she struggled, and, and the book talks about her struggle to define what was valuable to her, what was valuable, and what would sustain her on this journey. Uh, it was a stripping, it was, it was a letting go uh, of some small freedoms as she moved towards these death camps. Now, I love this story's image of a, a rule of life is basically stripping down the non-essentials in life to, for loving union with God, so that I center my life on receiving the love of God as a leader and giving the love of God as a leadership. And uh, now, every one of us is different. Just like there are 800,000 plants, over 800,000 plants in the world, and each plant needs different conditions for growth, different combination of light and temperature and fertilizer and what is called pH, etc. Some need full sun, others need sun, others need shade. Each one of us is different, so we each need a different combination of spiritual practices that will, will fit us and help us blossom for God. And so we each have our, in a sense, customized, unique approach as we follow Jesus that fits our personality, our temperament, our callings. Uh, one size doesn't fit all. Yet there are some commonalities, of course, for all of us. And so what I'm gonna do is I wanna take the, the, the categories of Benedictine spirituality, uh, now, Benedict's rule is a rule of life for Benedictine uh, monks, and there have been tens of thousands over the last, you know, 1,500 years who followed Benedict's rule. So what we've done is we've taken the, cat, the broad category of Benedict's rule as a format to help you as a leader begin to craft a rule or a, a trellis, a structure for your life so that the love of God is in the center. Everything revolves out of receiving the love of God and giving the love of God. Now, I want you to notice the four categories, prayer, rest, relationships, and work. Uh, and the key to Benedictine spirituality and, uh, and of a rule of life is balance. And again, we're back to the word rhythms uh, in our lives to keep God at the center. So what I'd like to do is, uh, I'd like to give you an example of one. It's, I'm gonna show you mine. Uh, and now again, I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, boy, I guess over 16 years now. And so you're gonna see one that's quite developed and again, it's changed over time. Uh, and I would try to visit it once or twice a year uh, over all these years. And my wife and I were just talking yesterday. Now it's so in us, it's so in our brains uh, and the structure, we, knowing that if we add a lot, something new to our work uh, box to the bottom right, we know it's gonna affect the other boxes. And we're always kind of concerned and watching out for the larger balance, but it's so much a part of who we are now. Um, we don't have to even, we don't actually have to formally, you know, write it out and look at each other as, in, as we did in the early years. But it's a tremendous starting point to stay grounded and begin to shift how we live our lives. So here's what mine looks like. And you could put different topics in different categories. So under prayer, uh, I put weekly Sabbath. That's something I do every, every week, Friday, six o'clock to Saturday, six o'clock. Uh, daily office, I pause for offices to be with Jesus three to four times a day. It's in my rhythm. Uh, uh, thirdly, I, I, I'm always in my morning prayer, uh, I, as part of my morning time with God, I do study of the life of Jesus, especially through the gospel of Matthew and John. I've been in for like three years, just pondering and letting it deep in, seep, seep, uh, seep deep into my soul. Uh, once a month, I spend a day alone with God, uh, at least once a month, to just be with him on scripture, prayer, reading. I journal regularly as God comes to me. Uh, I still listen to silence 20 minutes a day. It's built into my morning prayer, uh, like clockwork. I do the examine, comes out of Ignatian spirituality uh, daily, uh, actually multiple times a day. It's in my, you know, I just watch that. I meet monthly with a, bi-monthly with a spiritual director keeps me on track, uh, just a nice part of my prayer life discipline. In terms of rest, I exercise five, six times a week. We walk, uh, well-planned vacations, it's really, I gotta intentionally do that. Uh, on Fridays, I take off two-thirds, or all-day Friday now, 
uh, I read broadly. I love libraries. I'm just, I'm, I'm a big reader. It's, for me, it's pure rest and joy. Uh, I do sabbaticals uh, for three to four months every seven to eight years. Been doing that since 1996. I do seasons of therapy. Uh, I hit walls. I, a therapist I'll go see occasionally to help me work through some stuff, and it's always good. Uh, rest, I go to the beach. I hike. Nature, big thing for me. Uh, biking. And I limit. I limit my social media, uh, and I limit speaking. That's part of my rest is just putting that limit there. In terms of relationships, I, uh, I do uh, Skin to Skin with Jerry Daly. It's part of our marriage commitment. It's a regular commitment we have. I'm engaged with my four daughters, my two son-in-laws, uh, two grandchildren right now as well, June and Ovi. Uh, very important relationships to me. It's a priority. Uh, I stay in good communication with my siblings, two brothers and a sister. We get together at least once a year. Uh, I meet bi-monthly with a mentor, kind of a mentor coach. Just a great relationship for me, very life-giving. Uh, I have a mentoring group uh, with, with pastors, you know, with Jerry. Again, it's relationships, it's not really into work for me because it's such a joy. Uh, I'm present to uh, staff here at New Life Fellowship and key friends. Uh, vacation every year, fun with Jerry's family, you know, high priority. Uh, and then on the work, I'm not gonna go into all this work thing, but I, I want you to notice work gets a, gets a box. It's not my whole life. Uh, and I'm gonna ask you to really focus on the first three, prayer, rest, of relationships, because many of us have a work box that's massive. For me, I'm writing a book right now called Emotionally Healthy Discipleship. I'm, I continue to write content for Emotionally Healthy Discipleship, the course that we offer. It's in the vault on our website, very big priority for me. Um, I, uh, I serve as the visionary of EH Discipleship. I, um, I lead the courses here, the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and the Emotionally Healthy Relations course at our church. It's part of my, it's my role here as a staff person. Uh, I do a podcast, Emotionally Healthy Leader podcast, every week. It's you know, it's probably a three-hour commitment on a weekly basis that I that I do. And uh, I engage in Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. It's part of my ministry to serve pastors and leaders around the world. And uh, I oversee our finances at home. Uh, it's work for me. Maybe you're rich. You don't have. It's not work for you. For me, it's it's, it's work. And I limit my writing, uh, how much I write, and uh, I pray and process before I say yes to anything. Now, again, that's my rule of life, and and uh, I just offer it to you as an example. And again, you can move things around as you saw fit, because what I want you to do is I want you to pull out your handout uh, for me right now on page one, where it says crafting a rule of life. And what I'd like to do is I would like to read you, take you through this. And uh, then I'm gonna give you 30 minutes to actually fill it out uh, alone with Jesus. Um, okay, so it says crafting a rule of life. I'm here on page one of your handout. Where's the step one? So I want you to begin by doing this. You're gonna write down everything you currently do or hope to do that nurtures your spirit and fills you with delight. I'm talking about people, places, activities. Now, I'm gonna ask that you think more broadly about such activities as prayer. I know you love prayer, reading the Bible, worship. I'm gonna ask, leave that out for now. I know, I, I got it. The question is, what are some other things? It may include things like gardening or walking a dog or being in nature, talking with friends, cooking, painting, hobbies. List them all. Uh, what are they? Number two, write down the activities you need to limit or eliminate that pull you away from being anchored in Jesus. Remember, the goal is being anchored in Jesus, the love of God receiving. So violent movies, excessive social media, uh, commitments that take you beyond your limits. Next page, three, step three. What are challenges or have-tos in the next three to six months of your life that will impact your rhythms? Because we're trying to build in some rhythms to build an anchor in your life. Maybe caring for aging parents, a special needs child, demanding season at work. Step four, you're gonna, you're gonna fill out your rule of life and you'll see that on the next page there, um, you'll see it there on the screen as well, uh, prayer, rest, relationships, and work. Uh, and you're gonna fill it out. I'm really gonna ask that you, you're gonna have 30 minutes I'm gonna ask that you begin filling out prayer and rest and relationships, and you may not get to work, but I'm hoping it's gonna be filled enough that you're gonna say, I, have, I, I can't do everything I'm doing at work, and you've gotta set some priorities and limits. You can't shove everything into a small knapsack of your human life with only so many hours in a day. Uh, 
And you've got to do self-care. You've got to walk with God yourself. You've got to have a cup that overflows so that you can give something of substance to those around you. And then step five, you'll take a step back in a 30-minute period. You'll consider, what, what do you think will be your biggest challenge? What's the one thing you sense the Holy Spirit directing you to start right now? What might be one thing you want to stop doing? And is there someone you can invite to encourage you in making these changes? Now, just remember, you'll see some on the bottom of page two there, listen to your heart. God's uniquely made you. Make sure you've got joy, play, and fun somewhere in there. Take baby steps. Don't make this massive trellis or rule of life that you can't possibly do. Uh, give yourself a lot of grace to experiment. Trial and error. This is going to take time to figure out. And just figure out how much structure works for you, a lot or a little. I like a lot of structure. Not everyone's as structured as I am. Uh, you know how God's built you, but you need some and try to sort out what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now, and so you'll see then, here's the on, the, on your page three, there's your rule of life. So I'm going to give you now 30 minutes, and I'm going to ask that you would just spread out in a little, spread out in a little room you're in right now. There'll be a timer uh, up there on the screen. And let these questions guide you, and you're going to take some first steps in filling out the development and the crafting of a rule of life that fits you. Because if we're going to lead for Jesus in this rapidly changing world, we've got to be anchored so we don't get swept by the blizzards of life that are sweeping all around us. Okay, so may the Lord guide you and bless you in these 30 minutes, and may you meet him, and we'll come back together at the end of that time. All right? Blessings. Take it away.
Now, most people have an unconscious rule of life um, that is this. It's the American dream uh, rule of life, which is, you know, if, go to church once or twice a month, get my children in the best schools, pray for my family daily, buy a beautiful home, say grace every evening, read devotionals once or twice a week. You know, rest, take three weeks off a year, Saturday, Sunday's off, enjoy as much fun as possible without sinning. I'm under rest there. Go to, on one great vacation a year. Work out three times a week, you know? But most people, their rule of life is like, it's the American dream. That's the center. And what we're trying to do is we're, try, we're trying to move the whole culture, the whole church into, no, our life is Jesus. Uh, and give people a vision and, and, a, and a, actually even a, even a trellis or a structure to help them begin making some moves. So uh, it's, it's imagine making that kind of a shift. And again, I, I think of some of our, our staff who actually are helping people very intentionally move toward a kind of commitment to Jesus that's much more solid. I think again of the, I shared earlier about the Desert Fathers, that we're living in a day where there's so much of the world inside the church that in some ways the church and the world have become almost indistinguishable. And there's something here to learn from the riches of those Desert Fathers who are following the likes of Moses and Elijah and John the Baptist of we've got to get to God, like we've got to make some radical shifts in our life if we're going to be about Jesus in this world, in this culture in which we're living in. And so the rule of life gives basically a, a means, a, something tangible to work, to actually do that. So let me close our time together with encouraging you to begin to bring that, even the language of a rule of life into the general culture, beginning, of course, with yourself. <clears throat> And you know, in the EH Emotionally Healthy Discipleship course, each part of the course ends with go the next step to develop a rule of life. People are actually exposed to this idea of a structure coming out of the book of Acts. How do I plan and think through making steps so I can follow Jesus? And so again, they're gonna be exposed in a general way to this idea of a rule of life. And so we use that language in a variety of ways in the culture. But again, most importantly, I pray that you as a leader, uh, as a pastor, a leader, whatever your role is in the church, that you might step back and begin to craft a rule of life. Take some time after this you know, workshop here to work on this rule of life, share it with someone, and come back to it once or twice a year and say, how am I doing? What adjustments do I want to make? How's God moving in me? But let it be a way to keep you grounded to be receiving the love of God and to give it, because I cannot give what I have not received. What Who I am is way more important than what I do, and the state I'm in is the state I give to others. And that's why the most important gift I bring to our church is walking with Jesus, staying anchored in Jesus by his grace, so I actually have something to give other people. So God bless you, everybody. It's been a joy to be with you. I pray that you find the rule of life uh, as a tool that frees you to follow and become the man and woman he's called you to become. And you might do what he's called you to do. Blessings, everybody. Have a great day.